Hello, everyone. We're gonna talk about Ilhan Omar again because, god damn it, the news loves her and the people of the United States and abroad don't mind keeping the conversation going. So here I am playing my part in the cycle. But to be fair, the shit that is going on is fucking weird. That's right, weird. So last Friday, Trump put out a video on Twitter, much like my own, addressing Ilhan Omar's comments during the CARE speech. His was 43 seconds long. I will play it now. CARE was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something. So you have no idea right, right oh, now? Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> some people did something? Oh my goodness, there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. Some people did something? It just flew straight into it. It's well played, a good one for Twitter. I like mine better, but I'm biased. Now, since then, Trump has been slammed for inciting hatred. I mean, look at this headline from yesterday. Heading to Minnesota, Donald Trump attacks freshman Democratic Rep Ilhan Omar. Before taking off Monday for Minnesota, President Donald Trump again attacked Rep Ilhan Omar, a Democrat from Minneapolis, and one of the first two Muslim American women to serve in the U.S. Congress. Oh yes, in case you did not know, Ilhan Omar is a Muslim woman. Thanks, USA Today. I didn't know. On Twitter, Trump also criticized House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democrat from California, for defending Omar, saying she should look at the anti-Semitic and anti-Israel and ungrateful U.S. hate statements Omar has made. She is out of control, except for her control of Nancy. Omar, Pelosi, and other Democrats said Trump's frequent attacks on the freshman congresswoman from Minnesota smack of being anti-Muslim and are spiking death threats against Omar. Now, I have never heard or read the word smack being used in that way. And hold the phone, when did Trump say anything against Muslims? That statement doesn't have that word in it. Hmm. Let's keep going. Saying threats have escalated since Trump backers used her comments in a 2020 campaign video, Omar tweeted this weekend, We are all Americans. This is endangering lives. It has to stop. Correct. We are all Americans, and we should all act like Americans, yeah? I know someone's gonna go, but Trumps, what does an American act like? Well, let's start with not aiding and abetting or trying to assist Hezbollah or Hamas. That sounds like a good place to start, don't you think? And fuck it, let's throw in the Venezuelan government and the North Koreans for a bit until we can get a handle on what they are all about. Sound fair? Ilhan then came out with his long-ass tweet, and it's so woe is me it makes my skin crawl. Since the president's tweet Friday evening, I have experienced an increase in direct threats on my life, many directly referencing or replying to the president's video. I thank the Capitol Police, the FBI, the House Sergeant at Arms, and the Speaker of the House for their attention to these threats. Violent crimes and other acts of hate by right-wing extremists and white nationalists are on the rise in this country and around the world. We can no longer ignore that they are being encouraged by the occupant of the highest office in the land. Counties that hosted a 2016 Trump rally saw a 226% increase in hate crimes in the months following the rally, and the assaults increase when cities host Trump rallies. This is particularly concerning given the president's visit to my home state of Minnesota on Monday. Violent rhetoric and all its forms of hate speech will have no place in our society, much less from our country's commander-in-chief. We are all Americans. This is endangering lives. It has to stop. Now, this is the most disingenuous dribble I have heard from someone who's not Hillary Clinton. You know what's funny? If one were to go looking, we could see that the majority of the 2017 FBI stats on hate crimes don't peg Muslims as the religion getting the most backlash. Turns out it's the Jews that you hate so much, Ilhan Omar, you fucking bigot. I personally do not worry about hate crime stats too much. After all, Jesse Smollett proved what happens if you lie about them. Nothing. In fact, you don't even go to prison. Omar's colleague said she was differentiating terrorists from nearly all other Muslims. They condemned Trump for turning the trauma of 9-11 into a political attack. Pelosi, meanwhile, said the president's words weigh a ton, 
and his hateful and inflammatory rhetoric creates real danger. President Trump must take down his disrespectful and dangerous video. So fuck you all, you are all the most backstabbing, conniving, slimy snakes in the fucking world. You clutch your pearls in horror as you say Trump is a monster, yet you legitimately stage pictures of mothers running from tear gas at the border holding their children as shields. Not to mention, you stand on the graves of children in school shooting incidents to launch your political points to rob Americans of their Second Amendment rights. And even now, you are being called on your bullshit because Trump is personally delivering illegal immigrants taken from the border to sanctuary cities. What the fuck do you want? So don't even give me that crap. You're all liars, and with this kind of attitude, it's no wonder your best shot for a 2020 elect is creepy Joe Biden, I don't have a platform O'Rourke, and Comrade Sanders, or Booty Gig. Yes, I know that's not how you pronounce his name. You will usher in another four years because Democrats have lost so much sense that they can actively be seen lying and more people are starting to notice. I've ranted for a bit. Let's keep going. We are going to touch on a small piece of an opinion article written by a CNN national security analyst named John Kirby, who is a retired rear admiral, because I want to illustrate why all of this is an overreaction on steroids. It starts off like this. For the last 10 years, I've been writing letters to my nephew, John, who is named for me. Mostly, they are just observations about life, sometimes something more specific. This is the latest installment, inspired by some ugly commentary I saw on social media questioning Muslims' service and loyalty to the nation. Dear John, it's been too long since I've written to you. I apologize for that. I wish I had a good excuse, but I don't. Enough said. I will try harder to communicate. I'm prompted to write you now about Ilhan Omar. She was elected to Congress last year in the 5th District of Minnesota. She's an immigrant from Somalia, a Muslim, a vocal advocate of the rights of Muslims, and an outspoken critic of President Trump. Already I can hear the fucking sad music in the background. It's so goddamn sappy. Do you know how much evil happens in this country? And to the poor Muslims, can you imagine Johnny Jr.? <sniffs> Sniff. I mean, it could be worse. They could have only just now gotten the government permission to drive by themselves. Or, you know, a country totally could have just passed a law allowing for the execution of gays. Oh, wait. That fucking happened. Weird. During a speech to CARE, a civil rights organization that focuses on the Muslim minority, she referred to the 9-11 attacks in a way that caused right-wing commentators, and then the president himself, to distort her remarks as somehow dismissing that national tragedy. John, are you unsure of how she dismissed the tragedy? Because I know exactly how. She referred to New Zealand as a terrible tragedy, and then she called 9-11 some people doing some thing. Pretty fucking clear, you asshat. One could argue that Rep. Omar's use of some people to describe the 9-11 hijackers was cavalier. Maybe it was. You should stop right there. Full stop. That's exactly it. Ready? But her larger point was valid. No one cares. Those hijackers and the terrorist groups who survived them do not represent all Muslims. No one said they did. At home or abroad. And it's just plain wrong, un-American really, to hold in disdain an entire community of our fellow citizens for the evil act of a few who perverted their faith. No one fucking said they were indicative of all Muslims, you fucking idiot. <clears throat> but you know who did make that assumption? Fucking Ilhan Omar. By juxtaposing that some people and Muslims losing their civil liberties, you damn well sure she wasn't talking about America and Americans, because let's be honest, all Americans lost civil liberties after 9-11. Look up the Patriot Act if you're confused. So I find it terribly ironic Ilhan is somehow the victim while not only disparaging Jews, but also encouraging others to join her side of the radicals against the establishment Democrats. She advocates on behalf of terrorists. She can be openly seen lying in her speech. So you know what? She's the youngest child. She hits an older sibling, and when the older sibling hits back, she cries and goes to mom and gives that evil grin of I got you behind her back. Yep, that's Omar. And I can't wait till she's voted out of office. 
Honestly, I'm so done with this woman. She isn't even worth my time anymore. But that's what I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you thought down below. Have a good one, and I'll see you all soon.